Are you afraid of snakes? If so, you're not alone. A Gallup poll that asked adults what they were afraid of revealed that more people fear snakes than any other suggested possibility, coming in ahead of speaking in public and heights. There's even a term for the excessive fear of snakes, aphidiophobia. Snakes are mentioned throughout Scripture. For instance, Satan commandeered a snake to tempt Eve in Genesis 3. Moses threw down his staff and it became a snake in Exodus 4. And Paul was bitten on the hand by a snake in Acts 28. One of the more notable snake stories is in Numbers 21. As the Israelites were circling around Edom on their way to the promised land, they became impatient and started complaining against God and Moses. They groaned and moaned, huffed and puffed, jeered and sneered, going so far as to say they loathed the worthless food that God provided. This ungrateful behavior greatly angered the Lord. Since the Israelites despised what God sent them from heaven, He sent them something from the earth fiery serpents. Fiery could have reference to their color, but more likely refers to their venom. Their bite burned. These agents of death spread through the camp, biting the people, and many of them died. Can you even imagine that? To have snakes coming out of crevices, curled up in corners, slithering in the sand, and hissing at your heels? To see neighbors cowering in pain or lying motionless on the ground with snakes swarming nearby? How could you sleep at night or let your kids go out and play? It would be constant pandemonium. It didn't take long for the people to realize that they'd made a terrible mistake. They begged Moses to intercede on their behalf, saying, We have sinned. They knew that the fiery serpents were recompense for complaining against God and against Moses. Therefore Moses pleaded with the Lord on their behalf. In a remarkable display of grace, God provided a means of salvation for the people. He told Moses to erect a serpent and set it on a pole, so that those who'd been bitten could look on it and live. He gave them what they desired, life, rather than what they deserved, death, which is the definition of grace in a nutshell. Grace is blessings bestowed when wrath is owed. God could have just sent the snakes away. That alone would have been an incredible demonstration of grace. But He did something even better than that. He turned a symbol of death, the fiery serpent, into a symbol of life. And so it is with the cross of Christ. Jesus said in John 3 verses 14 and 15, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... So must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. Both the serpent and the cross were instruments of death. They were emblems of dread, despair, and demise. Yet God made them instruments of life, physically for the Israelites and spiritually for the church. Isn't that a wonderful thought? When I think about this story... I can't help but see us in it. While we didn't have poisonous venom coursing through our bodies leading to physical death, we did have the poisonous venom of sin coursing through our souls leading to eternal death. And just as they were powerless to do anything about it on their own, so are we. It took God acting freely and favorably in both cases. He did for us what we could not have done For ourselves. The Israelites experienced a horror scene that sounds like something out of Hollywood. Slithering slayers lurking in the shadows, hiding behind rocks, climbing on the pottery, and clinging to the walls, just waiting to attack their next victim. Then grace entered the picture. God intervened. Healing happened. The symbol of death became a symbol of life. All they had to do was look to the right thing in obedient faith. Have you done that? 